What is good, everybody out there? Thanks again for checking in to another episode of Court Thoughts, the channel where we basically talk basketball. First and foremost, thank you all out there for your love and support in helping me achieve my first milestone of a thousand subscribers. I really do appreciate you all. I've been doing this channel for just under a year and I have put a lot of effort and work into trying to make these videos as high quality as possible, always trying to improve video on video. So to see that I've impressed a thousand people to get them to tune in for more content each and every time, I see that number, it makes me so happy, but this is just the beginning. I'm gonna keep pushing, but let's get straight into today's video. Today we are going to be reacting to Tyson Daniels. Yes, sir. This man was selected eighth overall by the New Orleans Pelicans. I am going to talk a little bit about his path coming into the NBA when I go through the breakdown. This man didn't go through the normal route and uh, based on my recent videos that I've done around draft prospects, I've been focusing on players who didn't go through the NCAA and this was also the case. This man came through the G League playing with the Ignite. I think that it's really important that you find your own route to get to the path that you want to get to or to get to the destination that you want to get to, I should say. Listen, let's just get straight into the video today, man. I'm so excited. The video that we are going to be checking out is from the NBA G League channel. As always, guys, please make sure you jump over there and you give them a like and subscribe. Give them some love, but I'll leave the link in the description if you want to check it out without my reaction for yourself. All right, guys, let's get straight into the video. All right, guys, let's check out the G League's video. Let's do it. Here's Hardy. Hardy. Back to Daniels. Dyson. Oh, good collection. Good footwork. Did you notice when he collected the ball, Dyson his feet Daniels, were set straight in. <clears throat> Hopping straight in. Australia yeah, stepping straight into the shot. It. Terrell read that well. He's going the other way. He's going all the way. Tried the gym. Big body out. legs, bro. Daniels knocking it away. One defense. Here's Hardy. And an incredible block on this play. Terrell goes for the jam. Daniel says, not today. Ooh. Ignite leads. Ooh. I love that. I mean, effective on both up. ends, huh? I think he was just cold. <laughs> he hadn't had a touch in a while. He looked chilly. Oh, Good day. Wow, the length. Swatted. Definitely got that length. Hardy with a body. You had to see Isaiah Livers. Who being able to use your physicality and being able back. to use your height as well as being Stress skilled right. is really, really it's important. Six, six, really, swat. really important. Yeah. It's, it's such a blessing, man. Transition, you watch hard. Battle for the board now. Bochamp comes down with it. Daniels. He can't connect. Hit back out with four seconds left. Daniels hits that. See the uniformity in his footwork? Really good. Point game. Really good a consistency. So important. Looks at it. Ignite doing a tremendous job of staying on the offensive glass. And a couple. Only thing I don't like is the team collectively is just all hovered Dyson around. Daniels and then my man number one over there started to open up, which is good. But that's really got nothing game. to do with him. Huge shot for the prospect. Hopping into his step. Yeah. Jaden Hardy just committed his sixth five. So, good to see him back out there. Opening up into space, really good. Oh, Dyson Woo! Daniels throws it down Get with a left that. hand. Get that work, baby. Man. Good high collection. Notice how he brings the ball over the hands. Really good G work. League teams are finding guys that end up being really good players. Oh, look at that. Hey, oh, 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 Jetter quickly. Opening Dyson. up into space. The spin and the finish with the left. Oh, nice. Dyson. Daniels. Wow. They're really having to play really nice. honest and then Good using footwork. his explosion to get to the rim on that one. Dyson Daniels, the spin. What and a one. Dyson Daniels. Like that. Losing the handle. Fanbo Zang. Good hands. Active the first hands. Got to have active hands, Daniels man. Daniels gets the steal and slam. That's what Got a nice does, balance both. of athleticism and knowledge. Hurt you, AC. That's a good energy. Kick it out for a three. Too strong. Grab by Daniels. Cross court pass. Got below. Poor defensive positioning there without boxing out. Good collection and push out. Cherry pick and really basket. Can't go wrong with that. Yeah. <laughs> good recall. Yo! Nice lob. 
that good Euro vision. Step, My man got goggles, bro. There's the lob. Back screen yeah. and Michael Lobs and Jr. Games those two teams have played have been awesome. So see you out here on Thursday. See, they're so positionally clustered. Finger roll, no, but the Daniels dunk That's the type is of stuff that you got to do. Dude, everyone's style. shelled out, and Hardy, he's Hardy, the driving, like rolls. pushing in. It's a good move. And impressive good move. in spots. No, but Hovering how about space, Daniels? Good. Clean it up on the glass. He really said made it a, a few times. times a lot of balance, of physicality, with and plays like this. athleticism, Absolutely. and positioning. Absolutely, just following that shot, awareness. the timing of it, understanding when it was coming off the rim. Good work. Love that. veterans in, two prospects. Lifting up. Both prospects Screen off. Strong tonight. Good vision. The foul. Good vision. Very well rounded game. With the dish from Daniels. Getting it done inside. Gets open off that back screen. 5 11. Getting like up that. a little bit. Getting Carson Edwards up in the air. Pujeta. Good work. A couple people in the world I would recommend having a two down. Andre Ingram Bang, bang. Uh, bang, bang. bang. <laughs> the most talented high school player that I've seen live with my own two eyes, Harry Jocks. And again, this young man before the injuries was spectacular. And did Notice how the most of the passes have. that he's made have been directly to the basket, which is good. That goes to tell you how important it is that if you do not have the ball to be an option, to be a threat. Love that. Like Makes it so much easier that. for the pass to be made. And it's just the pass up has to hit the pass at the right spot, right time. Oof, love that time. Drop pass, bounce pass. Austin Jr. Work. on the back down. Couldn't connect. Ignite still with it defensively, though. Everybody running lanes, opening Austin the floor Jr. up. Three on two transition. Two hands. Big legs. Daniels hammers Good work. Hey fans, it's me, Scoot Henderson. Make sure you guys catch up on all the dunks and highlights. Thank you NBA so TV. much. Okay guys, as always, here is my breakdown of the highlights that we saw. The first thing that I'm going to comment on is his shooting form. Okay, more specifically, the consistency of his shooting form. I've mentioned this in previous videos, specifically in the CT's classroom series, one motion versus two motion shooting. If you haven't checked that out, please make sure you go ahead and give it a watch. I mentioned that your shot starts from your feet. Now, if you notice, when he was shooting, he was either hopping into his shot or he was stepping into his shot. Now, why is that really important? As the shot begins from your feet, it allows you to generate energy, right? Now, every single shot, one motion or two motion shooting, does not matter. It all begins from your foot placement. If your feet are crooked, then your overall balance is going to be crooked. So if your feet are cross-legged, your shot's gonna have to compensate. A perfect example of that, of that is if you look at the old shooting form of Lonzo Ball, you can actually check out in the video, I have a snippet where I show his body positioning and how he has to compensate for that. His body's really nice and straight. He's stepping in, so his rhythm and timing is there. Now, in being able to have that consistency, whether he's popping into his shot or whether he's stepping into his shot, his timing is not changing. If his timing's not changing, then the overall fluidity of his shot should not change. The only way it's going to change is if you're bothered by the direction of the defender coming at you. Now, we didn't see that. We saw a lot of consistency. Again, it's a very short clip associated to a full season's worth of highlights. So I'm, I have to take it with a grain of salt, but every single shot, jump shot that I saw him take was very much consistent. The only thing that changed was, besides his position of where he was on the court, it was whether or not he was hopping into his shot or stepping into his shot. Sorry for the disruption, guys. Just to clarify, when I'm talking about stepping into his shot or hopping into his shot, I'm talking about whether or not he's taking a singular step and then two foot landing, or whether he's just literally jumping into a two foot landing. Either which way, I'm a big, big fan. If you're looking to improve your jump shot or your shot effectiveness, I would definitely suggest that you need to look at your overall form and how you are taking your shot. If your form is off, that's the first place that you need to be looking at. But the next thing that I want to talk about is his passing. Passing is such a critical function in the way that the game is played. There is 10 people on the court at any given moment. Now, you have five people on your team, including yourself. If you can't pass, those other four people aren't an option, okay? You are a liability. If you are not a threat, you are a liability. It's something that I absolutely try to preach 
through and through when it comes to being an asset on the court. Being able to pass opens up other avenues such as your shot or just being able to drift in and out of space or get other people engaged. I would definitely say what was most impressive about his pass was that there wasn't a lot of difference in the types of passes that he was making, but all of them were going towards the basket. Now, that is really key because if I can make passes that are going directly to the basket and I can make them sharp and on time, it allows my teammate to be a threat. If most of my passes can go to the basket, right, and they're effective passes, meaning that they are getting to their destination, they're not blocked. Not only is the basket area or the area around the basket generally going to be the most clustered area where there's more defenders, it's also going to have to be really critical with its timing and placement. Being able to put a pass to where it needs to be is one thing, but being able to get the ball to the spot that it needs to be, when it needs to be there, is equally what makes a great passer so valuable. When we saw these passes, the passes were happening at the right spot at the right time. It's so, so important to have that, those two aspects working together. Fucking mosquito. So we saw that there was bounce passes, we saw that there was lob passes, we saw that there was straight up like just bullet passes or chest passes going straight into the lane. And I was really happy to see that they were getting where they needed to be when they needed to be there. So that's another critical part. If you can make sure that your passes are, are where they need to be, when they need to be there, it's, it's gonna make you so much more valuable on the court. The next thing that I'm going to talk about is his athleticism. Now, athleticism is generally not something that I like to focus on because it's primarily something that I associated to as like a, a God-given talent, right? Like you can develop your game around your athleticism, but you can't make someone more athletic, okay? Case in point, Luka Doncic is not anywhere near as athletic as the Greek freak. He is most definitely not the same size and he is most, most definitely not as long. However, he is able to be as effective, if not even more, because of the fact that he has IQ. Now, being athletic and being able to use that collectively with your IQ is really, really important. If you're super athletic, but you're jumping and mistiming your jump, you're not able to receive the ball. You're going to be fouling people. Yeah, you might be able to dunk, but it doesn't necessarily make you the most effective overall. A perfect example of that sort of misbalance in how if you don't address it, it can not benefit you in your later years is Blake Griffin. If you look at the early highlights of Blake Griffin, my man was jumping out of the building, dunking on people, volleyball type, type things, you know, just Insert clip now. You can't give a delay a game like that. That guy's. As you start to see that his game developed further and further into his later years, the athleticism dissipates. You can't beat Father Time. Not having a really good IQ on the game, not saying that Blake Griffin doesn't have a good IQ on the game, he's been in the league for as long as he has, and he's still an effective player in my opinion, but if you don't have that balance of athleticism and IQ, as you begin to age, it's going to hurt you, because well, that type of stuff, it, it goes away, it, it, it goes away. Perfect, perfect examples of when you see players that recognize this and change the way that they play, Kobe Bryant and Michael Jordan in their later years, their game changed. They weren't trying to dunk on people. They were working a lot more from the post. They were working a lot more from the mid range, their jump shot, how they were getting into shots, working in pump fakes, that type of stuff. They were being way more effective without having to do as much. Now, the reason why I'm calling this type of thing out is because it talks to the basis of good fundamental coaching. But having good coaches is one thing. Being able to absorb the information, understand it, and then apply it is even more critical. 
Now, Dyson Daniels, before he actually moved over to the G League, was part of the NBA Global Academy. The NBA Global Academy is a, a training uh, segment that is associated to the Australian Institute of Sport based in Canberra. A lot of the talent, a lot of the country's talent that we develop here um, primarily goes through the AIS. And there's really good quality coaching, but you don't get anywhere further with that information if you don't understand it and apply it. And so you can definitely see that he's used that information. The next thing that I want to talk about, and this is primarily going to be the last thing that I'm going to emphasize, is positioning. I would definitely say the team's rotational positioning was not great. I'm a big, big fan of opening up the floor. If you are clustered onto the court, uh, the defenders are clustered onto the court, and which means that you're not an option. And so if you can open up the floor and everyone drifts in and out of space, it makes it a lot easier for the defenders to get distracted and it also makes the defenders have to cover more ground, which means I've got a better chance of making you tired or you are potentially having mismatches or overlaps. And so being able to open up the floor is really critical. But the positioning that I'm going to talk about is if you notice a lot of the time where he was positioned was primarily out on the 45. One of the things that I want to emphasize is his drifting into space. Now, when you see that there was a couple of shots and missed opportunities, he was drifting into space and able to get lost from the defensive end, meaning defenders didn't know where he was. Now, at the beginning of the video, I mentioned the fact that a lot of the draft prospects that I had been focusing on had not gone through the NCAA. And again, this was also the case with Dyson Daniels. I think that now with the NCAA being able to allow players to obtain more money and be able to make money from their likeness or, or whatever the case is really, really good because I do think that a lot of the collegiate teams were pillaging off of these players' names. And, you know, as sad as that is, it's good to see that it's changed and it's adjusted, but that doesn't necessarily mean that the NCAA is the best avenue for players to go through. I'm a big, big fan of finding the right path for you. When we look at someone going through the reins in playing professionally, whether it's in their home country, we can use Nikola Jovic as a perfect example of that. Playing professionally in your home country, going overseas and playing somewhere else, like we saw with LaMelo Ball, it allows you to be able to develop your game, play at a higher level than what you would anticipate in the NCAA, but also learn a lot about professionalism, learn to speak with the media, learn to cover, recover and prepare your body for multiple training sessions. But also, you're gonna have to focus on understanding what you need to do to get yourself to the next spot. And I think that players going through and playing professionally in other countries is definitely an avenue that more players should be looking at. Just because a lot of players have gone through the collegiate route and there is a lot of eyes that are on the collegiate route, that doesn't necessarily mean that that is the best route. So I'm definitely excited to see what this man's season looks like in the year ahead, but also looking at how his game develops. There's a lot of really good baseline fundamentals that are there, but that's just the beginning. This is the beginning of the road. So I want you to go ahead and leave me a comment if you think I need to do another reaction on this man after his first season. Also, go ahead and leave me a comment and let me know if there's another player that you would like me to react to. I'm definitely, definitely interested to know your thoughts. You can also go ahead and jump into my Discord and join the community that I'm trying to build. I promise it's not a cult. You can come in and join the community that I'm trying to build in spreading love and awareness and knowledge all about the game of basketball. That's ultimately what it's about. Thank you so much for kicking it with your boy. Again, thank you to all the fans out there liking and subscribing to the channel. It absolutely means the world. And I look forward to putting out some more amazing videos for you in the near future. But until next time, make sure you're looking after yourself and take care and be safe. All right, peace.